Everyone deals with depression in different ways. Some try to handle it by themselves while others get help. We're not telling you that you can fight depression on your own, but there are definitely certain things you can do for yourself that could help massively. Here are 10 self-care ideas that you might want to try. Journaling. You might be surprised at how big of an impact this can have. Many studies have looked at journaling as a way to fight depression, and the results are very promising. Journaling forces you to reflect, and it helps you get things off your chest, even if you're just admitting things to yourself. Reconnect with a friend. Even if you have no desire to get out and talk to people, you should probably at least make an effort. Researchers have looked at the most effective strategies for dealing with depression, and actively participating in your own social life is a very beneficial tactic. Humans are social animals, so we actually need a community of some kind. Comfort food. Certain foods and diets definitely have a strong effect on depression. You could choose to go super healthy, and that definitely helps with your state of mind, but you might be surprised at the antidepressant qualities of various foods, including chocolate, which has serotonin boosting qualities. Tea and even coffee are actually great for fighting depression, and this is backed by numerous studies. Humor. We've all heard that laughter is the best medicine. Well, that might not be too far from the truth. Humor is actually a great way to deal with depression. Watch a funny movie, see a stand-up comedian, do whatever makes you laugh. Laughter releases endorphins and decreases stress hormones, among many other benefits. St. John's Wort We all know that antidepressants are one of the most common ways to deal with depression. These are special medications prescribed by professionals, but some might want something a little more natural. If this is the case, then St. John's Wort is definitely an option. This natural herb has proven effectiveness against mild depression, although it won't do much more for severe cases. Physical activity. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. Time and time again, studies have shown that regular, rigorous exercise is one of the best ways to fight depression. Exercise releases endorphins, which are natural feel-good chemicals in the body. Seeing the physical changes in our body after a hard workout is a great mood booster as well. There's really no downside to getting a little exercise done, and you're pretty much guaranteed to feel pretty good afterwards. Bibliotherapy Another proven method of dealing with depression is bibliotherapy. Although the word might sound complicated, it's actually pretty simple. Bibliotherapy is the use of books and therapy. This is probably one of the most popular self-guided forms of therapy out there, and it has a great track record. Usually, there is an initial consultation with a professional therapist, and then the patient uses a book to guide themselves along their therapy journey. The book instructs the patient on how to improve their mood, deal with depression, and conquer anxiety. One thing to keep in mind is that it's only recommended for those with mild depressive symptoms. Yoga A few different studies have examined how yoga can help with depression, and they've come to the conclusion that it can be very effective. Some would say that yoga is just another form of exercise, but in truth, it's more than that. Many people describe yoga as a kind of meditation in motion. It can be spiritual in nature, and it can also be very introspective. The results speak for themselves. Meditation Meditation might just be one of the oldest self-care techniques in history. People have been meditating for thousands of years, and the effects of this practice are well documented. The aim of meditation is to attain inner peace, which makes it a perfect strategy for combating depression. One of the most popular methods for dealing with depression these days is mindfulness, which is a type of meditation which focuses on being of ourselves, our thoughts, and the people around us. Numerous studies have examined the effects of this on depression, and it has proven to be quite effective. Quite simply, it gives us greater appreciation of our own lives. Massage therapy. It's always good to treat yourself to a nice massage. But if you're trying to pursue a lifestyle of self-care, then you might want to seriously consider massage therapy. We left this method until last for a reason. Massage therapy is only loosely linked with decreased depressive symptoms. It won't cure depression, but it will decrease stress levels. And hey, getting massaged is never a bad thing. 
What are some self-care techniques that you do to fight depression? Let us know in the comments below. Everyone has some idea of what their ideal life looks like. Whether it means affording to travel freely, coming home to a loving family, or having all the cats and dogs in the world. But things are getting harder by the second. It can be nearly impossible just getting out of bed in the morning. Why is it so much easier giving into negativity than it is to get out of it? Depression doesn't just weigh down our shoulders. It lies, often telling us that we're not in control of our lives, but we are. Whatever you're going through, know it's not always going to be like this. Here are 8 tips for dealing with suicidal thoughts. 1. Don't spend the night alone. When you're suicidal, it will be tempting to isolate yourself. Do you lock yourself in your room, shut the blinds, and hide underneath your covers? The thing about depression is that the darkness will welcome you, but this only makes you susceptible to believe your negative thoughts. Watch out for your safety, and don't spend the night alone. Call up your family friends, or lover. Tell them how you're feeling. If possible, sleeping over at their place is even better. Having company around can do wonders for you, because it means keeping those bad thoughts at bay, or allowing the new environment to boost your mood. 2. Cut off all ties with toxic people. Research shows that keeping toxic people in your life isn't just stressful, it can actually kill you. One study showed that subjects in negative relationships had a higher risk of developing cardiac problems. If someone is abusing you, physically or emotionally, please call the police for help. Your life might drastically change if your family members or partner are the toxic ones, but realize that they're putting you in more pain than they are supporting you. 3. Make a list of your accomplishments. Hey you, yeah you, look at how far you've come. Failure can seem like a big slap in the face, but we often obsess over perfection instead of focusing on what we've achieved. There's a difference. Striving for perfection doesn't allow you to be human. Embrace your flaws, failures, and downfalls as much as you appreciate all the milestones you've reached. Listen closely to what isn't working. Turn those into lessons and grow resilient. 4. Practice positive mantras. These are otherwise known as coping statements. Ending your life will seem like the only option to end your misery, but nothing lasts forever. Practice saying some of these. I will get through this. This is my depression talking, not me. I don't really want to die. I just want the pain to end. Stick these to your mirror, fridge, and carry them wherever you go. Let them be friendly reminders to be kind to yourself. You got this. 5. Find a therapist. Most people shrug this idea off because they might not be able to afford it. But there are options, especially if you're a student. An open mind is what will ultimately get you help. Call your insurance company for any insights they might have. It never hurts to ask your family doctor, too. Networks exist for a reason, and the more professional advice you receive, the faster you can find and work with a professional. 6. If it's urgent, please call the police. This won't necessarily stop your suicidal thoughts, but they will stop you from going through with the act. From here on out, they can take you to the ER where you'll be safe. We hope you never have to resort to this, but want to remind you that help is only one call away. 7. Find out what's hurting you and make changes to it. Do you feel stuck at your dead-end job, tired of the city you're living in, or not sure about what you're studying in school? It's okay to address that you're feeling unhappy, but don't succumb to helplessness. It may take time to find what works for you, but this is why practicing patience is so pivotal. Big projects seem intimidating, but break them up into smaller tasks to make them more approachable. Remember, as you wait for your miracle, never stop working on yourself in the meantime. 8. Whatever you do, please don't lose hope. I know it's easier said than done, but committing suicide will end everything including the amazing days ahead that you won't be alive for. People usually realize too late, while they're in the middle of the act, that every problem they ever faced could have been fixed. So please reconsider your health. You deserve so much more. What do you do to keep going or stay inspired? We want you to know that you're not alone, and we're sending our best wishes your way. For more helpful content, be sure to also subscribe to our channel. Thank you as always for watching.